One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. So, that's if somebody wants me to make a t-shirt that says, so, <laughs> so, um, I am the Hake, I'm James Hake, actually, host of the Hake Report. It is Thursday, December 5th, 2019. Don't forget the men's forum tonight, guys. If, you, if you're anywhere around Los Angeles or San Diego or, or Las Vegas, there's still time to get here. In time for the 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Men's Forum. And it is not, it is not um, recorded or streamed or anything like that. So it's not going to be on YouTube, guys. It is totally private. I recommend it. And I get feedback. I got some feedback about my t-shirts. That I should wear a polo or something even better like a button-up. Because I'm an adult. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm an adult, so I wear what I want. Nah, I don't know. But I appreciate it. I'm being told I'm shiny. <laughs> uh, because, because I have, um, either it's, it's, I think that it's, uh, sunblock. But it might be, <laughs> do you believe I wear sunblock even on rainy days? But it might be, um, it might be warm in here. So, I want to tell you guys briefly, quick, a quick tweet from Trump first. Nancy Pelosi just had a nervous fit. This is Donald Trump tweets, tweeting. She hates that we will soon have 182 great new judges and so much more. Stock market and employment records. She says she prays for the president. I don't believe her. Not even close. Help the homeless in your district, Nancy. USMCA and USMCA is a a reworking of the Nate of, of the uh, I almost said NATO, but it's not NATO. Reworking of the um, that one agreement, North At- I forget what it was called. NAFTA, the re- a reworking of NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement that Bill Clinton signed, I think, or somebody. I know that Bill Clinton signed something regarding it and a lot of stuff closed down in Detroit and elsewhere a lot of our car manufacturing took a hit I think a lot of our manufacturing went to like Mexico and stuff like that if I'm not mistaken um, I know that NAFTA was was considered not a positive thing by a lot of people including Trump criticized it and I know that uh, I think that what's that guy that fat guy who makes liberal anti-Republican, um, anti-Republican documentaries. I'm blanking on his name. But, uh, yeah, he, they, Trump has talked about the USMCA, which is the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, which is supposed to help make it more even for the American worker and for Americans about trade with Canada and Mexico. I think it should be better. Hopefully. He generally knows what he's doing about stuff like that. So that's cool. But um, it's been sitting, I think, on Nancy Pelosi's desk, and she hasn't done anything with it. Because she's too busy pretending to be so concerned about Trump's conduct. Um, you know, I'm going to get to the calls. There's a lot of you guys who already want to get in. And I appreciate it. Very interesting callers, actually. Um, but I want to make a brief point. Did you show the pictures of the blacks who played Nelson Mandela in the, in the intro music? Uh, no. Okay, that's, that's fine. I, I will get to those, though. If you had shown them, I, want, I would get to them right away because I don't want to, like, not get to it <laughs> since it was teased. But it, I wasn't teased, but now I've just teased it, so now I have to get to it. 
But I, um, I want to make a quick point because I read, I think I read as a sixth grader about, I was reading some book, I think. And I think I was like a sixth grader because that was when I used to read a lot. Um, it was a point that was made by an author, I think, about women talking about their husband's religion. Uh, or something lo- along those lines. And the idea was that women, when they get a little bit of that knowledge about this religion, they be- it becomes part of like a pride thing, a part of their uh, pride in their identity with their family and their, with their religion. And they start, um, in some cases, like bashing people over the head about, about stuff, getting overzealous, saying more than they know, but, but thinking that they know. And I noticed that, that women do do this about politics and everything else, and it's across the board, conservative or liberal, and the beta men do this too, who, who are women too. <laughs> you, know how, you know how men who, who have anger and stuff like that, and prideful and intellectual, they're like women? That's true, too. The men act like women in these matters once they get this little bit of knowledge. I think that's what school kind of is sometimes, in some cases. You know, education is supposed to bring out the best in you uh, originally, but it actually brings out the worst, most prideful stuff in people. And they just spout their facts, thinking that it makes sense when they're just being prideful and um, bashing people over the head with meaningless pointless talk. So it's just an interesting point that I read, and I wish I knew where I read it. But I've heard um, Jesse kind of make the point along the, those lines and other people. So it's just something to be aware of because uh, actually both, as I said, both women and men fall for this type of trap of like, just, it's just your ego talking. Interesting. I have a couple of questions from the chat from, you know, career haters. (laughs) I call them career haters. Maybe they are really fans. I don't know. Marcus Jones says, why do you guys censor free speech? He asked me in the chat and I didn't get a chance to respond because I was getting ready for the show. Um, Because we're grown. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He called that a lame response too. he was (laughs) uh, what some of my greatest critics of fake news and stuff like that. Make interesting criticisms of me and my presentation delivery and stuff. But, um, yeah, we uh, sometimes censor free speech and I generally do um, allow my mo- the mods to do what they see- do as they see fit. Maybe they get a little overzealous, just cut them some slack. I know that it is, it, that it can be, as someone who has been warned and censored and timed out and stuff on and banned even from different platforms not platforms but different like pages and channels and things on on YouTube and Facebook and stuff and blocked on Twitter and stuff I know that it kind of appeals to your ego to get that stuff happening to you and some of it I see you guys get uh, timed out a lot Joe and Marcus just don't take it personally I'm for those of you who don't know, there's a live chat that goes on in, in uh, YouTube. And there is some times that uh, people's live chats get, people get prevented from chatting for like five minutes. <laughs> or even banned. And then sometimes like I'll unban them or whatever. But just cut them some slack. Don't, don't come back being like, who timed me out and why? I mean, you can ask why, I guess, but just don't be too aggressive. Because you're gonna hurt your chances of like staying on, and you probably want to stay on. It's it's funner. Although I have been told, and it is true, and I have noticed myself that the live chat, when you're active in live chat, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you end up missing the show. You miss the points that are being made and stuff like that. I'm often doing these premieres. I did a premiere last night on the Jesse Lee Peterson channel. Well, I set it up right. The Jesse Lee Peterson put out a 90s episode of another another episode about homelessness from 1996 in his TV show. I have a little thumbnail. It's, it's pretty cool. There, you see 1996, Jesse? 
and a pastor who's been on before, the Hispanic guy, Jaquez, Pastor Jaquez, and then this slick-looking homelessness advocate guy and his two homeless helper guys. They run like a homeless outreach thing. Homeless outreach program or something like that. That's what the hop is if you're looking at the video on this guy's hat. He has a hat. This is from 1996. But I noticed that if I get too active in the chat, too sucked in to the conversation, I miss the show. I miss some really, really good points. It's especially bad during church. So, just a little side note. So that's, but that's a long answer to the why we censor free speech. I let the bods do what they think is best, generally. And then Do Right, who's been banned many times, <laughs> even by me, I've banned him sometimes. Because he says nasty rumors sometimes. But he says, do you love black people? Referring, asking me. Hmm. I think I love, I, I think not. I think I don't love anybody. I think that's the case. But I do notice, quick point, that's the answer. I do notice people don't really hear or comprehend what you're saying. Especially if you're not saying, and this is when you're talking about Jews, when you're talking about Christianity, Jews for the people that are mad at the Jews, or the people that are overly aggressive in so-called defending the Jews. They hear what they want. Christianity, the Bible, people who are really into their version of Christianity or their uh, thing about the Bible, whatever. If you don't say exactly what they want you to say, exactly how they want you to say it, pretty much, they do not comprehend it and they make all kinds of false assumptions and accusations to you about it. Um, it's so interesting. For example, even you saw it on the national stage with um, Congressman Steve King out of Iowa who was talking to the New York Times in the New York Times hit piece in January of this year. He said, because it was, it was stated, I guess, that Western civilization, references to Western civilization is a white nationalist idea, is, a, is pushed by white nationalists in order to appeal to the mainstream, I guess. And he's all white, he's all white nationalism, white supremacy, and I'm paraphrasing, Western civilization, how did these things get, become all um, offensive or something like that? He's like, how did, how did this get all, his point, I think, was how did Western civilization uh, come to be seen by the liberals as a racist dog whistle, is basically what he was saying. And he explained it roughly like that, too. But the whole rest of the people thought that he was defending white nationalism and white supremacy as things that should not be offensive, which, in all honesty, they shouldn't. Uh, white supremacy is non-existent. White nationalism is just as legitimate as black nationalism, which is just laughed off by the mainstream media. If even They're not even laughed off, in all honesty. They're just shrugged off. Same with white nationalism should be shrugged off. You can, uh, because people have a right to their, um, their political leanings. The Democrats are worse than the white nationalists or the black nationalists, in all honesty. The Democrats are for abortion. I don't believe that most white ethnostate or black ethnostate, including, I think, even Louis Farrakhan, I don't think that he's for abortion. But the Democrats are. The Democrats are more extreme than either one of them. <laughs> The Democrats just pretend not to hate the Jews, but the Democrats do. <laughs> they hate everybody. But um, the white ethno state, a lot of them do blame Jews, and so does uh, Louis Farrakhan people. So it's just interesting. But um, he, was, he was roundly criticized, back to uh, him, back to this Steve King, as um, defending white supremacy or something stupid like that. And he was kicked off of his... Committee assignments. That's evil. Including by the rhinos, the majority of the people. The majority of the so-called Republicans in office. And he was on the House Judiciary Committee. He should have been up there in this um, stupid impeachment hearing defending the president. But they removed him of all his power. He's been in Congress forever and he's been pushing for a wall since well before Trump 
ever called for a wall, to my knowledge. From way back in like 2005, I showed you guys, I think during this time, back in January, whatever it was, footage of um, this guy calling for a wall and talking about Western civilization and pushing for um, good people that make babies rather than, a, rather than having Obamacare pay for, um, pay for birth control, which actually aborts babies too, I've heard. I think I heard that from Chris from Arizona. So, he didn't say th it, stuff exactly as they wanted, and he was called a white supremacist. Stupid. We've gotten threats in the past, Jesse Lee Peterson, I have, um, from blacks going psycho over thinking that we laughed at them after we hung up on a call with them, or thinking that we laughed at Trayvon Martin's death, which wasn't true. It reminds me of um, the lady yesterday, Nice lady, uh, fan of the show, supportive, but taking it personally when the, us in the show laughed about the uh, Eucharist, the communion, when you take the, the bread or the cracker, they called it cracker and we're laughing, and the wine or the grape juice, and you eat it as though it's uh, Christ's blood and body. Um, she took it seemingly personally or overly serious. Getting upset over nothing, really. Even if you're factually right about these things, it's no reason to be upset. And in all honesty, most of the times, it's it, that they're, the stuff that they're upset about is based on a lie, a false assumption about the other person. A misunderstanding. Um, I was warned and criticized about taking so-called taking sides with communist China by criticizing the protesters. Um who are really the rioters, right? Who are suspected communist-controlled opposition, by the way. As criminals and rioters, people really don't hear what you say. And I was, of course, criticized for, for criticizing the um, so-called victim of Epstein because they think that I'm covering for Epstein. I really don't care about the Epstein thing. The people are going to take care of him. The people who are into that. You already, if you already know, then why do you need to hear it from me? The, no, I don't hear anybody else criticizing the uh, so-called victim who's making a scene, uh, making a fool of herself, this Virginia Roberts Jufre, because you need to criticize both sides. Anyways, um, let me get to some calls, and then hopefully I will talk about this. These I didn't know that so many so-called actors had played, well, they are real actors, played Nelson Mandela. Uh, isn't he a communist? The South Africa guy who brought, who fought to end apartheid and made the country worse, and ultimately? <sighs> we'll talk about that if I have time. But anyways, let me get to some callers. Let's get to Chris out of Arizona. Chris, how are you? Good morning, James. <laughs> how are you? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you again. Hey, I wanted to address Ursula. Yesterday? Ursula, yeah, she Ursula said, was the lady. Yeah, I'm your token Catholic here. Oh, you're a Catholic, you're a token Catholic. Why do you say that? Oh, I mean, I mean it as a joke. Okay. Because um, I'm Catholic and, you know. Are you serious about being a Catholic? Uh, no, I am not practicing. A non-practicing Catholic is someone that does not regularly go to church. I mean, I can't say I'm practicing because I don't go to Mass. Every Sunday. Do you watch, so, do you join in church with Jesse Lee Peterson online? Yes, I do. Nice. Yes, I do. All right. Do you I like, like do you, do you do non, do you do anti-Catholic sin things like s some of the, the, like the seven deadly sins and stuff like that? Seven deadly sins. Don't they believe in the seven deadly sins? <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> I guess I know more about Catholicism than you. Or maybe I don't. Oh, well, the seven deadly <laughs> sins, I mean, sloth and, you know, I know what they are, but we're not, we, we don't get preached at about that. Oh, okay. That's what I mean by it. Well, you don't go to church, about. so you wouldn't know, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm a cradle Catholic. All right, all right, all right. I'm just playing around. <laughs> <laughs> and and Ursula, oh, it's okay. I'm not going to be offended by you. No, I know. Um, I, I joked around with my sister. When is, is James going to, like, try to argue with me? Okay, you know yeah. I mean? 
So what was your comment about, so Ursula yesterday was the lady that I mentioned that was upset, to, um, implored us not to call it a cracker, the Eucharist, right. saying that that is the body of Christ, and said that she wants the Jesse. body, blood, yeah. Yeah, she, she wants Jesse body, and me blood, to become soul, Catholics. and divinity. We, we consider it the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Yeah. The whole, the whole thing, the blood, we drink the blood. And it's considered a mystery once you take, sorry, I can't call it, before um, before the priest consecrates the host, it's a cracker. No, this is the same, yeah, this is the same lady who said, I see your heresy. Um, Your heresy is showing. Because I said that God doesn't care about our souls. He'll let them go to hell. But um, my point was what Je- that, my point was she- what Jesse says because Jesse says he makes a good point. Does God care? He, he that was one of his biblical questions, right? Um, and his point was he doesn't care. He loves because caring is comes from hatred, emotions. Isn't that interesting? Interesting. Yeah. yeah, that is interesting. I now I understand. Oh, okay. Wow. But she now I get that. Yeah, yeah but she. Um, because it sounds so bad, right, to say God doesn't care. She thought that that was heresy. She she kind of ass- mm-hmm. um, assumed or didn't understand, and so she jumped to conclusions about it being heresy. So that was my point yeah. about it. She's, uh, yeah. She seems like really a comprehend, cool but lady. She but does. Just wrong. Actually, actually, her voice sounds just like mine. I'm like, is this my sister? <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. It sounded a lot like me, except for one thing. Um, we do not, um, other religions, I lived in the, in the South. I lived in Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, Maryland. Wow. And when you go to church, well, my dad was in the, in the Army. Okay. When you go to church, I'd go to church with my friends, if they were Baptist or Protestant, and the first thing, as soon as I walked through the door, are you saved? And she reminded me of that. She reminded me, oh. like, yeah. you know, back off. I happen to be Christian just like you. No, you're Catholic. Interesting. Do you get it? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I so mean, it's kind of like a pushy thing. I didn't know Catholics were like that. That's interesting. I thought that it was just the the regular, I call them regular Christians, right? Because that's how I grew up. Uh, is he Christian or Catholic? <laughs> my, it, was, it was one question that my brother asked me, or my, my other brother. My oldest brother asked my middle brother about a friend of theirs. Is he Christian or Catholic? But um, that's interesting. I didn't know that they were were kind of like preachy like that, pushy. Oh, oh, yeah. Every time you go to a a non-denominational church or another Christian church that's not Catholic, Catholics don't ask you when you walk through the door if you're Christian. Oh, you're talking about other Christians, non-Catholics. I'm talking about, no, Catholics don't do that. Right. Okay, yeah, I didn't think that they did. I, I didn't think that Catholics friend. were pushy like that. I knew that non-Catholics were. Yeah, the Protestants they are. are. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Protestants. I would go. I lived in the Bible Belt. Okay. And I went to church with my friends. The first thing they asked me when I walked through the door, "Are you Christian?" Right. Are you saved? Yep. Yeah. And then they said, "You're not Christian. You're Catholic." Who said that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> not mostly the Baptists. Mostly the Baptists. Okay, that's funny. Did, so how did you Earth feel about saying, that? Um, it irritated me. Yeah. And the reason it did is because I'm Christian just like you are. Right. And how, how can you tell me I'm not saved? How can you tell me that? Yeah. It, it, it was like um, being with my brothers and sisters in Christ and being told you're not one of us. Yeah. That's interesting. What the, the fu- you know what the funny thing is about that? Is... You could make a, a guess that none of y'all were saved, so-called saved, or born again, you know? I know, <laughs> I know exactly. Nobody knew what they were talking exactly. about. It's just like what I was just opening with, with people yeah. talking about what they think that they know and they don't, really don't know. That's interesting. The comprehension that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm totally. Wow. Yeah. That's a shame. I didn't, no wonder we've been losing in this country because we've thought that the South was the strongest of Christians. But if they were, if some of them were like, a lot of them were like that, then that's not real. 
like a lot of them are like like, like saying, Ursula. "Are you saved?" and blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it causes dissension. Yeah, I mean, it's they don't even really know what they're talking about. It sounds like, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody who knows what they're talking about would talk like that. Did Jesus do that? <laughs> Are you saved? Well, I mean, of course, he saved people through his death, right? But I don't know. Jesus <laughs> and resurrection. just had conversations. Jesus just had, just had conversations with people. The yeah, he the told world. them, go and sin no more and stuff. I mean, he was That's honest, right. and, it, and he, didn't mind of, he didn't mind offending if people are inclined to be offended. But um, it doesn't seem right. This seems weird. That it always seems off to me when people come at you like that. Um, has has anybody done that to you? I yeah, things along those lines. I mean, I never said yeah. I'm Catholic. I'm I'm Christian, just like you, because I was raised the norm. I call him the normal Christian, Protestant. Protestant. Yeah, <laughs> the normal Christian. <laughs> normal in America, right? Because Americans were America was founded by. I think Protestants, for the most part, the, and then some the were not really. were pretty strict Protestants, weren't they? Yeah, at least, the, yeah, the, most of the pilgrims. So, um, but I definitely did encounter that, and you've, you know, you run into that a lot. You want to come to church or stuff like that. It's like a pressure. I it's remember, like they feel uh, guilty, and so they need to proselytize. In fact, I even remember leading a Bible study feeling after being told that I should do that. With a couple of friends <laughs> from high school. Oh, man, flashbacks. Oh, so anyways. That, that's actually kind of fun, but I had a, a next-door neighbor say, hey, do you want to go to a Bible study? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I would love to go to a Bible study. Yeah. Then I'm uh, attacked by four women. <laughs> and I said, I thought this was a Bible study. You guys are trying to save me, and I'm saved. Yeah, And then they started pointing stuff out in the Bible that said I wasn't saved. And I was just totally confused. Wow. Like, what a no, mess. I wasn't confused. I knew where I was. I knew my relationship. I knew where I was. But the fact that they didn't believe me that I was saved and I have these four women coming at me telling me I need to ask Christ into my heart. I was just like, Jesus in my heart, whatever it was. I was right. Like, okay, we're done. <laughs> Anyway, Chris, I appreciate that. Interesting feedback to me. Well, thank you. All right. Take care. Have a good day. All right. You as well. All right. Let me get to... Let me get to Russell out of Virginia. Russell, how are you? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you doing, uh, James? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you. Uh, First of all, I have to apologize because I call for specific reasons. And then after listening to you, um, I kind of changed my... All right, that's um, fine. Go for it. Question. All right. So so my question to you, uh, James, is that why is it... Because I listen to you, and I listen to Jesse also. Um, why is it that you guys both uh, feel like your perspective on things is right? And anybody that disagrees with you is wrong. Like that's just not realistic. But like, isn't you guys? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But isn't that how everybody is? Everybody who yeah. has a perspective thinks that they're right. Otherwise, they wouldn't have that perspective. No, no. When when I have a perspective that, and someone disagrees with me then I can respect their point of view and say, okay, well, you know, we can both agree to disagree. And, but specifically, and I can't say this with you, okay, because you have never said this to me, but I can say with respect to Jesse, his response is, what? Well, no, you're just wrong and I'm right. <laughs> right. I don't understand that. Like, have you ever seen yeah. something? Have you ever seen something so clearly, and known somebody was wrong, but they didn't see it, and so that you told them, "No, you're. I'm telling you, you're wrong, and I'm right." You never had that experience. Everybody's perspective is their perspective. Like, 
But I know you don't really believe that it's all comes down to just perspective because some there's some cases where there is is a right and there is a wrong But not everybody sees it as clearly as everybody else as other people So like Jesse maybe Jesse in that instance saw something that was that he saw something very clearly and Saw that you were clearly wrong and he was clearly right right Jesse Jesse is not 100% right in all aspects of all all things Right. No one is 100% correct in all things. Except for Jesus. Including, including <laughs> Jesse. But, so uh, he says, but you didn't, I'm right. But hey, hey, you didn't answer my question about, about this case where, about right and wrong. You, you've ever seen something so clearly that you knew somebody else was wrong who didn't see your point? That's a, that's, that's a personal perspective. That's not all be it and all right. That's a per- that is a personal perspective. You're not really answering my question, man. Yeah, I am. No, I because am. sometimes you're right and the other person is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a personal thing. No, it's not. It's a personal thing. Oh, come on. You can't... What you're saying, it almost sounds like you're saying that there is no truth. No, no. Okay, Dude, then, there, say, then sometimes no, no, somebody no, no. is right if, and the other person I, is wrong. Can I ask you? Can, All right, can go I for it. Your question? Yeah. All right. So if I say to you, I can run a 50 yard dash in 20.3 seconds, and you say, no, you can't, there's a right or wrong. Exactly. Either I'm right. Oh, you're wrong. R- and if you Wait. say... <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> what? You said either I'm right or you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Either, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I know. Either, it doesn't matter. Either somebody's right or somebody is wrong. Or both. And if you hold to your truth that you're right and I'm wrong and I do it, then you're wrong. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's put it. Let's put it into a different <laughs> perspective. That's what Lee Peterson said. That he challenged God and said, uh, "God, if you are truly God, make it rain." And it was a clear and sunny day. He made it rain. He made it rain. Yeah. When he was Either a kid. That's right. Or it's wrong. Right. Either or. Right. right? Yeah. Okay. So, so now there's no way to prove whether that happened or not, right? Correct. So you have to trust him that it happened. Okay. I choose not to trust him <laughs> that it happened. I don't think that it's a choice to trust or not. Because, because if because if you just simply don't trust him, then you can't help not trusting him. Because you haven't so, you haven't seen that he's right about things in general, so you uh, assume that he's wrong about this too, or he's lying or something. Okay. Yeah. So you have to take. So you have to take. You have to take. <laughs> Okay. Has Jesse lied to you before? About about stuff that actually matters, I mean? Yeah. I He's not he's um listeners, Russ Russell is not drunk. He doesn't drink. I can't hear what you say? I said that you're I told the listeners because some of the chatter is thinking that you're drunk, uh, that you're not drunk because you don't drink. I have um, medical issues. Right. I cannot drink because I have um, issues with my... Yeah, I remember that. I trust you. (laughs) I'm very trusting because I'm white. Anyways, man, um, it's not a big deal. Think think about what you say. 
because I will hold you accountable. <laughs> All right. So, no, what, what are you talking about? I'm I'm asking you specific questions. I'm having a conversation with you, and you're making stuff about me being drunk. I what, said that you're not. What are you talking about? I said that you're not drunk because these people are in the chat are saying that you are, and so I'm just trying to clear it up. But I mean, you didn't. I mean, you didn't really ask any questions. I gotta go, man, because you made the point about either you trust people or you don't, and you don't listen, trust Jesse listen. and stuff no like that. No worries. You you're gonna go. And yeah, that's fine. No problem. Thanks, man. I All appreciate right. it. Take care. No problem. Talk to you okay. again. All right. All right. So, real fast, let me just tell you guys. Malkuth X made an interesting point also known as Nick from St. Louis, he said, Hey, are you saved equals do you sin? Think about it. <laughs> Malkuth X, you're such an intellectual. Aren't you a Muslim? Go sit down. That's not the same thing because Jesse isn't at the door confronting people. He's having church. He does that during church, a regular discussion, because we're having a discussion or an interview, right? Do you sin? He's not pressuring them to get saved so-called saved, he's not doing it out of guilt, he knows what he's talking about, and you know that he knows what he's talking about. And, um, so, no, it's not the same thing, Malkuth X, also known as Nick. Oh, uh, did I dox him? No, he, he outed himself as Nick. Um, so, let me show you guys these pictures from, well, some of these are not pictures, but these are just names of people who in some cases, I thought better of. Maybe I didn't. But I came across this, the South African, right? Because I was trying to think about people who have been hashtag me too'd. Some of these, um, you can call them establishments or institutions. People who have, be there are people and organizations that have become institutions, practically, in America. It's, like, respected, generally. The Boy Scouts at one point were respected, um, and then they became pro-gay. The Girl Scouts, less so, but okay. Once re somewhat respected, their, their Girl Scout cookies were cool. And now they're like pro-lesbian and all kinds of stuff. Transgender and all that. The um, Fox News was once respected as fair and balanced. And now they're, um, more and more, many of them are turning liberal. Or much of this stuff that they do. Like, they have this woman who's in control of the statements that they put out, and they trashed, they trashed a guy named, um, Michael Knowles, who's just a nice, decent, conservative guy from, uh, Daily Wire, who referred to that Greta Thunberg, that teenage, 16-year-old, I think, um, Swedish, mentally ill Swedish child is what he called her, who is being propped up by the, all of the liberal media and far left for pushing that climate change hysteria, leading a global protest, right? And he said that they're not about science and what's right. They're, if they were, they wouldn't put up a, they wouldn't prop up a mentally ill Swedish child to um, do that. And Michael Knowles, this guy who's been on the Jesse Lee not the Jesse Lee Peterson show, he's interviewed Jesse, and he's been on the, he, was, he appeared at one of the men's conferences recently. I think it was two men's conferences ago. So, um, so he said something that's factual, that she is a mentally ill Swedish child. It kind of, honestly, kind of comes through because she's like, how dare you? And is all serious about this, this climate change activist kid, uh, 16 year old, right? But she's kind of small, so you can refer to his, her as a kid. Just propped up, and um, he said a fact, and it was like a wake-up call. But it was too manly, right? Too manly, Michael Knowles. Too true. And a Fox News, like, head honcho uh, PR lady woman or something like that said he won't, he won't be uh, uh, scheduled again in the, in the future, supposedly. And so, that's another example of an institution getting taken down. That's also another example of 
a man's words, true factual words, getting misconstrued as, as malicious. Nothing malicious about Michael Knowles, generally, right? Generally. Um, especially in that term, he was taking the side of her, of the Swedish child, who should be at home at school in Sweden. Anyways, um, they've taken down Bill Cosby. They were excited about taking him down, not because they care about women that he supposedly had sex with and they claim that it was rape or date rape or whatever, but because he told blacks to be responsible. That's what comes up. That's the number one thing that comes up amongst the blacks. They don't care about, about what he supposedly did or didn't do. Um, they took down Bill O'Reilly, a respected, fair journalist. You know, you can you have your criticisms of him, many of you guys, and some of them are quite fair, but he was a respected white, straight, Christian, conservative man of power and old, older, not old, but older. The older people don't go, don't join into this boomer hate. Uh, cut the boomers some slack. Yes, they are wrong on some things, many of them. But uh, these people, in, especially in Bill O'Reilly's case, he had this old school, like, man mentality of just telling the, being up front, generally, right? And they took him down. And it's kind of like the establishment, uh, people who are closer to this side of being true. Sean Hannity, they've try, been trying to take him down. So, I was thinking about how they tried to take down this black actor, and I couldn't think of his name, so I was thinking, was he, didn't he play Nelson Mandela? And I don't know if he did or didn't, but they didn't name him in this article. But this guy, oh, now I'm blanking on his name, I have it written down. No, not Danny Glover. So this guy, I don't think he actually played... I'm gonna mention somebody who's not mentioned there. Um, Cuba Gooding Jr. They're going after him. Oh, I remember now. Cuba Gooding Jr. played Dr. Ben Carson. <laughs> um, in a movie. Years ago. I didn't, I didn't think I even saw it, but Cuba Gooding Jr. Has been... They're trying to hashtag me to him. And by hashtag me to... Somebody is accusing him of so-called sexual impropriety or something like that. Rape or sexual assault or something like that. Some crazy accusation that has been so commonplace amongst women. So, feminist, really. So, um, I came across this article and there's... And this, the South African is an outlet from South Africa, presumably. And they say, they have this headline from 2017, eight Hollywood actors who played Nelson Mandela brilliantly. And one of them, you know, that headline, that's Morgan Freeman playing, isn't Nelson Mandela a communist? I thought he was. And then they have Danny Glover, who is, he played, didn't he play opposite Mel Gibson in those movies? I don't know. I was sheltered, I didn't get to watch rated R movies when I was a kid. <laughs> But he, so Danny Glover turned out to be a liberal, disappointing, right? Uh, Sidney Poitier uh, was another black guy from 1997, played Mandela. Morgan Freeman played Mandela in this movie called Invictus, I guess. Clark Peters, and I don't have a picture of him, but he played Mandela. Why are all these Mandela things? I guess they really love communism, right? Hollywood? Of course, right? David Harewood, never heard of him. Oh, her. Him? Well, the movie's called Mrs. Mandela, but <laughs> David presumably played the, the husband. Mrs. Mandela was evil. She was, didn't she advocate for necklacing? She was, I think, worse than Nelson. Necklacing being when they put a tire filled with gasoline around a black's neck, or maybe even whites, I don't know. And who was considered to be siding with the side of apartheid or siding with the whites. And they would set it on fire and there was basically torture and light the person on fire to death. Evil. N necklacing. Winnie Mandela. If I'm not mistaken, I think that she had kind of advocated for that. And Nelson may have been involved in that stuff too. Is Winnie still living? I don't know. Nelson died. Terrence Howard. The guy from Hustle and Flow, <laughs> also from that, that other 
black TV show now that with the gay guy? Empire, Empire, yeah, with the Juicy Smol Smollett. <laughs> so Terrence Howard, he was in that movie Crash, I think, too. He played in this movie called Winnie Mandela. Wow, I didn't know all these dumb movies came out. Idris Elba. Idris Elba looks like a young Jesse, or a Jesse. <laughs> to me, I could be wrong. But Idris Elba played at Mandela. And then Lawrence Fishburne, what? <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne being the guy with, um, the guy who played uh, in that one movie that you guys like, with the red pill in it. I don't know. The Matrix, yeah, thank you, Joel. <laughs> Joel is my, uh, what is it called? Um, pop culture go-to guy. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. Did you guys know, I mean, probably almost none of those actors do you really respect. I kind of respect Fishburne. Um, if I, you know, I kind of respect them all, I guess. But I, I don't respect them for their politics, and it's... It's insane that they would have that many Nelson Mandela movies. It's kind of like the World War II movies Hollywood is all about. Uh, Cernovich, Mike Cernovich, journalist, he's been on the Jesse Lee Peterson show and at men's conferences. He tweeted that ho you never see Hollywood coming out with movies about the Hol Holodomor or the um, Cambodian genocide or these other genocides because they support the leftist things that... Um, that committed those genocides. They only talk about the Nazis. So, they support communism. Communism more deadly than Nazism. Just FYI. But they're both wrong, because they're siding with, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, I just wanted to present that stuff to you before the show's up. Um, let me get to Rick out of Hampton, Virginia. Rick, how are you? Rick! Hang on, Rick. I'll get back to you. Check on Rick. Bobby out of Nashville, Tennessee. How are you, Bobby? I'm well, man. How are you? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you. You too. Uh, uh, thanks. Um, so I have a, really quickly, I have the 2016 Department of Agriculture chart on uh, food stamps, and I wanted to um, ask you kind of a trivia question. So I have the breakdown of all of the spending and the number one spending uh, is on meat, poultry, and seafood, uh, and that's fifteen percent of all the spending at one point two billion. That's the de um, from spending by the Department of Agriculture. I don't know who spends it, but this is the Department of Agriculture. Okay, within report within on that. Okay, yeah, right. So uh, number one is meat, poultry, and seafood. Interesting. Um, that's fifteen percent. What do you think number two is? I was going to guess, like, grains or farm or something like that. Okay. Sweetened beverages, $608 million. Wait, are you talking about, like, consumer spending? Uh, I'm talking about SNAP. It, it, it says SNAP household expenditure. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Food yeah. stamp spending. Food stamp spending. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> so this is, so the, basically the Department of Agriculture, or whoever's writing these checks, is spending six hundred eight million dollars a year, and that's number two after meat, poultry, and seafood. But on, on, you on you're saying closer, sweetened beverages, meaning like soda and stuff. Exactly. But see, if you look Kool Aid. Closer, <laughs> by the <laughs> way, sugar. number four is frozen. I'm sorry. Number five is prepared desserts. Four hundred fifty three million. Wow. But see, and this chart is actually wrong. A little bit misleading because it doesn't include. Uh, milk as part of sweetened beverages, even though it kind of is, although milk I understand. But then you have um, juices at uh, $110 million, bottled water at $78 million. And if you actually, like, add all that up, sodas and drinks, just, uh, you know, crappy, high-calorie, high-sugar drinks are number one. It's more, they spend more on that than basically anything else. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. By yep. food stamps. I wonder yep. if they so buy food al stamps are bait. alcohol. I don't know if you're allowed to buy. <laughs> but, no, uh, no, but uh, the, 
just the fact that we're basically writing a check to Coca-Cola for six hundred million dollars a year. Wow, um, is is to me. I mean, and I and I try to have an argument with some people about this, and they say, "Well, why shouldn't poor people have soda?" It's like, well, because we shouldn't pay for it. They should get a job. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it's no wonder that these stupid far left companies are far left. You know, like the Coca Colas, and which is another former respected institution, practically, right? They used to be known as like American. Um, um, you know, like there's these, there are these fast food outlets, fast food um, companies that support the illegal aliens. They support this so-called immigration reform, amnesty for illegal aliens, because oh yeah, lot, they benefit well, from the, the illegals working. Yeah, they the corporate. First of all, illegals, basically anybody low income will be more uh, attracted to fast food. Um, and then also the workers, you know, you bring the workers in, you drive yep. down wages. Corporations, love, this is why every major corporation loves uh, unlimited immigration, whether it's legal or illegal, because That's they evil. know that it brings down the, the cost of wages. Yeah, it's, it's um, money and false, uh, false compassion, imitation compassion. Yeah, yeah that's... Money the, is, you know, evil. the money is one aspect. The other, I mean, there's like kind of esoteric yeah. prophecy behind importing these people, but oh. also it does, <laughs> it does come, down to, uh, come down to profits, too. Yeah, it's, it's more than the, just money, though, because it's, you know, in terms of, like, my friends who support the illegals, you know, like my high school friends, a lot of them were illegals or their parents were illegals or they have friends and it's just a, a fo- and, the, you know, the whites have this, uh, I'm talking about white liberals, have this false, oh, the children, oh, these people are here, you're uprooting them and feeling sorry for them, mama spirit, like Jesse calls it, just okay. enabling evil and it's just corrupting well, you- everything. And everyone. But you know the thing. No, oh, I'm sorry. No, you, go for it. You know it. the thing about uh, uh, the road to hell being paid with good intentions. I mean, that's the worst yeah. part about all of this is that white people are, you know, so compassionate, and that has been totally hijacked by, quite frankly, the synagogue of Satan. Yeah, whites used to be whites used to be sensible in their compassion. Like they would be tougher. They would be more um, jerks, for la- for lack of a better word. <laughs> they would be. Yeah, men um, were men. Yeah, they were men. And even the women thought a little bit more like men, you know, logically. And uh, even way back, they didn't even have to be concerned about convincing women because they didn't vote. But now, like, the right, hey, people are I'm thinking sorry, more I like that. I'm sorry, I run to my wage cage. Appreciate you, Bobby. Thank you, man. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Let me quickly get back to Rick and then Joe, and then we'll see. Rick, are you there? Good. Good, good afternoon, my brother James. What's happening, my brother? Not much. Good to hear from you. You too, man. Keep up the good work, my brother. Thank you, man. And, man, golly, man, what y'all doing out there in California, man? I know y'all in L.A., but San Francisco, man. You know, it's, it's no reason. You heard about the story up in San Francisco, haven't you, the, um, James? Which one? The um, sports announcer for the 49ers. He was saying that um, Lamar um, Jackson... Was able to pull, you know, you know, win the win because of um his skin color and the ball. Oh, you know what? I didn't catch that, but I think Jesse may have covered it on his show. I heard it kind of in the background, but I was prepping for mine, so I didn't really hear it. It's, it's just so crazy, man. Uh, all he was saying is, and I don't believe he meant anything racial about. It. He was saying by um Lamar being dark skinned, yeah, and the ball is dark. It's raining outside, and when you're playing football. You listen to two things, the, um, the um, quarterback and you're looking at the ball. Right. So once he gets the ball, um, the ball is blood in his ass so close with his skin color, he can't <laughs> tell if he hands it off or hold on to the ball. That's Genius. And he, I don't believe he meant any harm by it. Right. And they overreacted. Yeah. And they suspended him. And it's going to come to a point that even white can't even <laughs> commentate being themselves. I know. That's such a, that's a funny story. I mean, it's funny, but it's, but it is evil. 
Yeah. You think it's evil? I think it's evil what they're the overreaction to him. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I was going to say he didn't do anything evil to say, and that is a good um a good benefit to Lamar Jackson. I would use that to my benefit to win a game too. Yep. But he, they <laughs> turned it around like he was being racial with it, and they killed right. me, man. That's funny, Rick. I appreciate the story. Thank you, man. Yeah, and uh, oh, one more thing. Got a question for you. All right. What do um blacks mean by when they say white privilege? You know, <laughs> I don't. You know, I'm like, do they mean like they get if blacks get stopped by the police, they get beat up, or if whites get stopped by, they won't they won't um do anything to them? I mean, what are, what do blacks mean when they say white? Because I get sick of hearing it. Well, they mean that uh, whites have the privilege of more frequently having had been raised by both parents and more, you know, generally they're a little bit more peaceful even when they do disagree and, and disrespect. They're still not as, uh, as um, aggressive. And uh, so whites do benefit from like certain, uh, both, um, both repu prior reputation about the group in general so it just, mm -hmm. you know, generally they, whites aren't expected to act out as frequently as blacks commonly do. And um, just those things. I think that's what they mean. I mean, you know, that's, what, that's what they should mean. <laughs> I really enjoy my life, James. Right. If you make good decisions. You don't overreact. If the police pull you over, answer his questions and let them know that, look, I'm not trying to harm you. Don't ask him what you're pulling me over for. He's going to tell you if you give him time. Yeah. I appreciate it, Rick, man. I gotta, okay, I gotta man, wrap it up. God bless you, my friend. All right, you too. Joe out of Phoenix, Arizona. Good to hear from you, Joe. What's up? How you doing, James? Doing fine. Yeah, back on Mandela. Yes. Mandela denied being a communist many times when, when he was alive. Now, the, the ANC was definitely in bed with the Communist Party, though, because they were both against apartheid. ANC but is Mandela, African National Congress that he founded, right? He was one of the founders, yeah. Did he? Okay, yeah. And they, but they, but since that time, they've be, definitely been more communist. Well, the ANC was definitely in bed with the Communist Party because, yeah, you know, it was kind of a marriage of convenience because they were both fighting apartheid. Right. But Mandela himself, but Mandela himself said, "I am not a communist." Many, many times. Okay. Um, as, as, interesting. As as far as Winnie Mandela, yeah, she, she was... had her 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 bodyguards, but that were very very violent. They called them the Mandela United Football Club, and one of the reasons why Nelson left the Winnie is because he was mad about how violent her bodyguards were in terms of fighting of apartheid. You know, Nelson believed in nonviolence, but for for the most part. So when these when these guys would go out there and do a lot a lot of violence, including Nicholson, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that her bodyguards participated in that. That's crazy. Absolutely, yeah. Interesting. Thank you, man. Thank you for the uh, corrected facts. And it was interesting to hear you say earlier that you don't you don't have love in your heart for 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 black people or anybody really. Yeah, I think that's how most people are. But it's not good. It's not good to be that way, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting, though. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. All right, bud. Have, have a good day. Bye. All right. We'll talk again, hopefully. If the Lord is willing and the creek doesn't rise. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let me quickly just make sure. Tomorrow is the Fallen State, and tomorrow is Get It Off Your Chest Friday. And I'm looking forward to seeing that we have some tapings. The Fallen State tapings today, and that's going to be fun. Um, I may be talking more about this Gabrielle Union stuff. I know some of you guys just roll your eyes. You don't know who she is or care, but she's just a symptom of a bigger problem. Might be worth talking about later. But for now, that wraps up the show. I'll talk to you guys later. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you subscribe to Church with Jesse Lee Peterson. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. And guys, make sure you go to the men's forum here at Bond in Los Angeles. And women's forums are third Thursday, typically. Make sure you're on our list and check in with us about it. All right, guys. Take care. <laughs>